spiritual growth or any growth really, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional growth doesn't happen on the yoga mat or in meditation. It actually happens in the conflict when we're, you know, stressed out, when we're angry, when we're sad, when we realize we have a choice to respond in a different way. Welcome to the Fire, Soul, and Grace podcast. I'm Dr. Christy Tompkins, functional medicine practitioner and transformational coach. If you are looking to up-level your health in body, mind, and spirit, scale your business, improve your relationships, and create a life you love, you are in the right place. Every other week, we'll bring you a topic and feature incredible guests worldwide. Be inspired and feel empowered to live your life with greater joy, meaning, and purpose. I'm excited you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to the Fire, Soul, and Grace podcast. I'm Dr. Christy Tompkins. And today, in today's episode, I am so excited. I've got this really special guest with me here today. Um, Her name is Kate Vasquez. And we are going to hear so much more about Kate, uh, her history, her what she does, and how she impacts her female, I, I think it's mostly female clients, um, across the world. And um, I hope you enjoy. So welcome, Kate. Thank you so much, Dr. Christie. It's just such an honor and blessing to be here and just having this conversation with you today. Yeah, yeah. I'm super happy. So I'm going to read a little bit about Kate um, and her bio. So Kate Vasquez is a former physician assistant who left Western medicine to become a functional medicine practitioner, mentor, speaker, author, and thought leader. She is the founder of Radiant by Design, which blends functional medicine, human design, and nervous system regulation for a unique approach that cultivates a deeper healing of the mind, body, and spirit. She guides women to overcome stress and physical imbalances in their body so they can embrace the radiance of who they truly are. I love that. Love that. So, um, yeah, let's dive in. So tell me a little bit, um, you mentioned that you were a former physician assistant and you have transitioned into functional medicine and now it looks like you're getting into a few other, um, really cool pearls as well. So tell us about your history as a physician assistant and what made you transition into functional medicine? Yeah, absolutely. That is a great question. Well, when I was, when I was younger in, in high school, I went through anatomy and physiology and I just, I fell in love with the body. This, it was just, the body is just so beautiful, all the intricacies. And there's just this innate intelligence that is directing everything without our conscious awareness. Right. And so I really wanted to learn more about the body and I really wanted to help people uh, with the physical healing. So I ended up jumping into becoming a PA and worked in different specialties. Cause that's the beauty of being a PA. It's like, you're not stuck in one specialty. So I started off in cardiology and then I jumped into, uh, urgent care did that for, for many, many years, a little bit of ER, but after about six, seven years of, of being in Western medicine, working in an urgent care, I realized I wasn't actually really, truly helping people because people were just sick all the time. They kept coming, you know, and, and seeing me, I kept seeing a lot of the same people and they're like, why aren't the medications helping? And you know, what else can I do? And I just kind of felt stuck because I'm like, I wanted to help them, but I didn't know how to help them and how I wanted to help them. I couldn't help them because it's like, and you know, these are the only things that we can do in Western medicine and also urgent care. Cause I'm like, you only have like five, 10 minutes with each person. So you couldn't really dive deep. And then I came across Dr. Hyman one day online. I don't even know how I came across him, but I started listening to him talking about functional medicine and how it just gets to the root cause and um, listening to like this little girl he was able to help who helped her clear from eczema and asthma, just like removing gluten and doing all these things. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I love that so much. And it made me think of growing up, like my mom always had these holistic remedies we rarely went to the doctor. So anytime we were sick, you know, it's like we had tea and she would wrap our throat and we would have, yeah, like the, the Vicks Vapor Road rub on our chest, which now it's not as, not as good as we think it is. Right. It's more of, it's better to use like eucalyptus oil and things like that. But, um, I remember she also had just like these herbs and things cause she grew up in Poland and 
they would always resort to herbs first. And I realized like Western medicine doesn't teach us about herbs and using these natural holistic remedies. Everything is just, yeah, medications and more medications. So when I discovered functional medicine, I was excited because I'm like, this is how I wanted to practice medicine. So I went through um, the Institute for Functional Medicine, got my certification and really got the opportunity to just really focus on, you know, on the basics, right? So I, I left Western medicine, started my own practice. It was Radiant Health um, at the time, but I really got to focus on lifestyle, you know, helping people to focus on what are the best foods to eat for their body, you know, um, and, and not just exercise, but sometimes excessive exercise is too much and how to find that balance. And then also working on getting better quality sleep and reducing stress and all these things. So that's, that's been my journey of just really transitioning from Western medicine to functional medicine. I love that story. And I, I let, and by the way, Dr. Mark Hyman, you said Dr. Hyman, but I think probably most people know who that is. Um, Mark Hyman, um, he is, he trained as a, as an MD, conventional MD, kind of went through his own healing journey, his own, um, health conditions. And then he, um, started, he, I don't know if he started, but I think he went through the IFM back in the early stages, yeah. back when it was first getting started. So he's now obviously very, um, definitely a thought leader in the functional medicine realm and, um, is now writing books and a, a few other things too. So, um, what I wanted to touch on is your history with, um, or at least your family history with your mom's background, where she grew up and having those holistic remedies growing up, which I think is so cool. Um, I didn't have that. And I know several of my guests that I've interviewed so far, um, they had that in their family. They had some sort of, whether it was a family tradition or their parents were into eating, you know, super healthy when it wasn't really cool to do so. I just, I love it when that plays um, a very positive influence in your life as an adult, especially in your professional career too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just so grateful because she, like, you know, she grew up in Poland and they did things so much differently. You know, walking into the pharmacy, you can actually talk to the pharmacist and they'll give you all these holistic remedies and teas and tinctures and herbs and things like that to just start trying right away. And, you know, here it's like, we don't, if we go to the pharmacy here, they're going to prescribe or recommend an over-the-counter medication. So it's like, it's, it's a completely different lifestyle growing up. Right. And so, um, so I got to experience that, like, um, during summer we would go to Poland and got just to see this different way of living. It's like people really didn't go to the doctor unless something was wrong, unless the holistic remedies didn't work first. But here it's like, no, let's try the over-the-counter medications and the over-the-counter medications didn't work. Now let's go to the doctor and get more prescriptions. And <laughs> it's interesting because like being in Western medicine, I realized like with the prescriptions, it never really addressed the root cause. And there was a lot of side effects that came with that. And so then people would be on more medications and more medications. So I'm, I'm grateful for that upbringing, that experience that, yeah, she, she always, she always cooked at home too and, and did the best that she could. Cause you know, some of the things that we ate, I'm like, it wasn't that good. It wasn't that healthy. Like I remember making a taco salad with Doritos and I'm like, oh my gosh, how was that healthy? But my parents didn't know. They did the best that they could at that time. And, you know, over time they, they learned as, as I'm, I'm learning too about, yeah, the quality of the food that we have. Plus they didn't have all this fast food in Poland either. Like everything was just whole. It was fresh. Like my grandmother would go into town Every single day, she walked into town. She didn't have a car. She would walk into town, buy freshly baked bread, buy, you know, go to the butcher, get freshly sliced meat. Everything was just so fresh. And they had this little teeny tiny fridge, so they couldn't store much. And so whatever she bought was was for our meal that day. So everything was just fresh. Everything was whole. So I'm just so grateful for that experience growing up because it really instilled a lot as I got older to just really focus on whole foods and food as medicine and healing because, oh, I didn't also share, but I also had a lot of my own health issues that had developed living here, here in the U.S. too. I, um, 
Well, when I had migraines since I was a, a child and it was the only one in my immediate family, never really understood like the root cause of the migraines and why it was just me that had that. But um, as I got older, I was also put on birth control for acne and not realizing that, yeah, as I was eating, you know, uh, meat and drinking milk that was full of hormones and antibiotics. So that probably was contributing to that. And a lot of it was hormonal. And then in college, had a lot of constipation because I was stressed out, had a lot of anxiety. And um, so, yeah, so going into functional medicine, it was able to not only get to the root cause of a lot of my, my clients, you know, and their issues, but I was able to get to the root cause of the acne, get to the root cause of the gut issues. But the only thing I couldn't really get a handle on was the anxiety and the migraines. So those are the two things that I'm like, I don't understand. I'm like, I went through Western medicine. I went through functional medicine, just trying to figure out what's going on in my body and just understand. And I'm grateful that I was able to resolve a lot of issues. I also gained more energy because I remember in my 20s, I was so exhausted just from stress, working 12 hour days and um, just mentally, physically emotionally exhausted. And I just remember like, yeah, my legs feeling very heavy and just taking naps during the day. And once I went into functional medicine and healed and just, yeah, I, I, the energy started coming back, but again, I still had the migraines and the anxiety got better, but I'm like, but why can't I get rid of it? <laughs> so, so that's been a little part of my journey. Just like, it's just been a journey of, of really healing, learning, about the body and learning, you know, what are the different things, the modalities and things that we can do that's more holistic to really help heal our bodies. Thank you for for sharing all of that. I mean, I think your your story or stories um, are very similar to a lot of people. You know, you you, uh, are human bodies. We're, We're so fragile and we have this sensitivity. We have this beautiful ability to heal, but we also are so prone to the stress of life and the stress in our diet and the stress of just being a human on this planet and all the, in all the different ways with, with regard to migraines. Um, there's a lot of people that have migraines. I know I had them as a child as well. Mine fortunately went away. I don't, I don't, I mean, mm-hmm. reflecting back, I, I all, well, I didn't have quite the healthy childhood that you did. I ate, probably ate too much sugar and, mm-hmm. um, not so healthy foods. Um, for a lot of people, the common or the conventional approach to migraines is a migraine prescriptive medication, sometimes over the counter pain meds. Um, and of course we both know that that doesn't always address the root cause. It usually doesn't for some people it's a, it helps with their quality of life, but it's not, uh, addressing the underlying issue with regard to your migraines and, or your anxiety and stress. Um, what do you feel are the biggest triggers for your anxiety, stress, and the migraines? Yeah, that is a great question. Well, one, you know, I, I learned, I was, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend about the migraines and I used the term my migraines. And one of the things she pointed out was like, the migraines aren't yours. She, she's like, when you're saying my, you're like claiming and identifying with it. And I was like, oh. I didn't realize that. So I started to be mindful and and not say my anxiety, my migraines and just call it the, because I'm like, I realized like at the end of the day, it was just what my body was experiencing. It wasn't who I was, even though I had identified it with a long time for a long time, because I thought that, you know, I'm like, okay, this is just some, this was my fate. This was something that you know, I'm like, I couldn't understand like why, why me and not my sisters, you know, why was I the one that had the migraines? But I'm like, well, obviously they're here. Maybe this is just my fate, something I have to deal with for the rest of my life. Um, but I do believe that the migraines and the stress or excuse me, the migraines and the anxiety, the, the, the root was, was stress, not being able to handle stress. Um, not be able to handle and and process my emotions because I love my mom so much. And yeah, she has given me so much in my lifetime, but I, I realized like a lot of the patterns I had taken on that we call anxiety was what she had. And so, you know, I would observe her and, and watch her like whenever she would get stressed out about something or she was worried, it was usually because 
there was just the sense of loss of control. And that's really why we experience anxieties because we fear losing control and she would freak out. She would freak out whenever things weren't going her way, when she thought that, yeah, she wasn't going to be able to have a handle on things. And I learned how to respond the exact same way. So for me, I recognize one, anxiety was just something I was experiencing emotionally and physically in my body, but it was also a pattern, a learned pattern from my mom. <laughs> and my husband, I love so much, he would point out, he's like, you're acting like your mom right now. And I'm like, ooh, because no one wants to hear that, right? No one wants to hear that they're acting like their parents. <laughs> and so it was a wake up call for me because I, I recognized, whoa, there's this piece that I hadn't addressed. So yes, I had gone through functional medicine and I really was focusing on eating better foods for my body. I had taken out a lot of foods like gluten and dairy that my body was reacting to, contributing to bloating and gas and and acne. Um, So I was eating all the right foods and I was exercising. I used to do heavy, intense lifting. And I recognized that a lot of that was putting a lot of pressure on my body and straining my body and also triggering migraines. So I really backed off, but I still continue exercise, but I exercise in a way that still feels good for my body. Um, but again, I'm like, I realize like, even though I'm doing all the right things and getting good quality sleep, I was even doing yoga and meditation. Uh, I wasn't really handling the stress because there's a quote and I'm not going to be able to quote it exactly, but just kind of summarize it that I saw. It says, you know, spiritual growth or any growth, really, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional growth doesn't happen on the yoga mat or in meditation. It actually happens in the conflict when we're, you know, stressed out, when we're angry, when we're sad, when we realize we have a choice to respond in a different way. And so I started on this journey, actually, this around, actually, before I jumped in functional medicine, I've been working on my mindset. Uh, my husband sent me off to Tony Robbins UPW because the first year of our marriage was very challenging because, yeah, constantly emotional, you know, mental breakdowns because of the anxiety. I didn't know how to handle my emotions and just, yeah, just taking on the world and venting to him. Um, and he sent me off to Tony Robbins to help me understand the power of the mind. And so it was then when I learned about limiting beliefs and the limiting belief that I had been carrying most of my life was I'm not enough. And when we don't feel like enough, that creates that anxiety, that creates that stress in our bodies. And so, um, so yeah, so on this journey, I've really on the side have been doing a lot of the internal work on my mindset and just really observing and becoming aware of the thoughts that I had, the beliefs that I had, the patterns that I had, so I can start to shift those in a way that serves me to move out of that state of anxiety. Because what I really wanted to feel was love and peace. That's all I wanted. (laughs) I didn't want to be in this constant state of anxiety. And I recognized as long as I was in this constant state of being anxious and worried and overwhelmed, that was what was triggering the migraines. And so that was the missing piece that I realized. I'm like, there's this emotional mindset component that Western medicine, that functional medicine was not able to, for me to, uh, to provide for me to allow for the healing. And so I started on that journey and, you know, you and I both have been to Dr. Joe Dispenza, which really helped me to learn things at a energetic level. Cause I'm like, yeah, still focusing on the physical things. Right. But I'm like, there's so much more than the physical. There's a lot on an energetic level that we don't really understand but is so important when it comes to healing. Yeah, you just you just unpacked a whole lot of a juiciness lot. there. <laughs> I love it. I want to go back to um you said something about, you know, spiritual growth or any kind of transformation growth. Doesn't happen on the yoga mat. Doesn't happen when you're sitting on a log in the redwood forest. I mean, it can, but it can. um but it's typically in the conflict and the trials and the challenges and the setbacks and the tears and the, the quote failures. That's where you're like, Oh gosh, I'm really pushed beyond my limit here. Um, and that's, that's when you start to really see the, the profound transformation. If you can learn from those, those challenges and those setbacks and those failures. Um, 
And also the the mindset, you know, so Kate and I were part of, um, I'm not sure if you were part of the Megan Walker uh, code. Okay. So we were part of the same mastermind group. I'm also a Del Tevlin mastermind group. Um, and Adele Tevlin is all about mindset and um, transformation using the power of your mind. She, she gets into quite a bit more. And Dr. Joe Dispenza, so Kate and I have been part of this pilot program, this uh, Inner Health Coalition with Dr. Joe Dispenza for healthcare practitioners that just started um, just a few months ago. And we're just we're just wrapping up here uh, the, the first program. Um, and meditation and kind of going inward and changing our our beliefs and our our I guess our our limiting thoughts and our actions and behaviors combined with meditation and breath work what have you found that has helped you the most like what have you learned about yourself through all of this personal development on the emotional spiritual side yeah well I love the meditation, you know, because it is it is really, really powerful. When I first started meditating, it was just an attempt to quiet the mind and still the body, which was not going to happen because what I recognized was I was in a survival state. And, you know, we're we're either living in a survival state or we're living in a calm, relaxed state. And most of the time we're in that sympathetic survival mode where it's just like, yeah, we're, we're anxious, we're overwhelmed, we're constantly thinking about the future or the present, or excuse me, the, the, the future or the past. We're not thinking about the present. And when we're actually in the present moment, that's when we are relaxed, when we are calm, when we're in that parasympathetic state, that's where the healing happens. And so I really had to do an, a, an inner reflection you know, like you're saying, and I would do that in meditation. And I started to really get curious once I understood the power of the thoughts and the beliefs that I had. And when I would get triggered, like, for example, my husband would say something and I would get really triggered and just react in a certain way. I would go and sit myself down in meditation and ask myself, whoa, one, what just happened? (laughs) What did he say? And why did that trigger me? Because once I could get down to the root, so it's like, yeah, we're talking about getting to the root of physical things in our body. It's also getting to the root of our emotions. And once I could just walk myself through that process, I realized, oh, he tri- what, what he said triggered me was because it all came back to this core limiting belief. I felt like I wasn't good enough in that moment. So of course it's triggering, you know, otherwise, because if I felt like I was good enough and worthy, it wouldn't have bothered me. I wouldn't have been triggered. And the reason why I felt like I wasn't good enough in that moment was because I realized it linked back to something that happened in my past. And I was like, what? Even though it's not happening right now, but our subconscious mind is saying, hey, that happened in the past. Now he's saying this, it might happen again. Warning, warning, danger, danger. All our subconscious mind wants to do is protect us and keep us safe. And so, yeah, we feel things physically, emotionally in our body. We go into that survival mode, you know, to either fight or run away. And that was what was happening in the body. So once I started, yeah, just basically pulling apart why I felt a certain way emotionally and physically it started to make sense why I was constantly living in that state of anxiety and overwhelm and frustration and why I was getting the migraines. Because when your body's in that survival state, everything tightens up and tenses up. And so that's how it would start. It would start with tension in my shoulder and neck, and then boom, it would go into the migraine. Now, everybody's going to react differently, but I, a lot of my clients that I work with One of the questions I ask him is, do you have physical sensations in your body like tightness or tension and where is it located? And most of them have it in the neck and the shoulders and back. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to get migraines, but we're all living in this survival state. So meditation was really helpful for me to just really get get curious. But then the real test, like that quote says, is like, then once I started to build this awareness in the meditation It was learning to take a pause in the middle of the conflict, which is not easy at first. (laughs) When you get triggered, our first response is to, yeah, react right away and say something we didn't mean or do something we don't mean to do. But if we can stop for a moment, close our eyes, take a couple breaths, 
and really sit in that pause and say, wait, do I really want to say this right now? What is something else that I can say that's more loving? And it was a practice. It was a practice and I'm not perfect because sometimes I still find myself reacting. But again, it's like what I realize is that this is this is a journey. This is a journey. There's a lot of lessons to learn if we're open to leaning into that and ask. And one of the most powerful questions I asked myself was, what is the lesson in this? And once I started to really like tune in and dig in and reveal the lesson and all the challenges, all the things that were happening, it really helped me to learn, learn a lot about myself and learn like who I really am and, and shed who I'm not. <laughs> Cause I realized too, the anxiety I was experiencing was because I didn't feel like I could be who I wanted to be. I felt like I had to hide who I really was in order to make people happy. I was seeking that external validation, you know, the people pleasing that we all go into. And um, that was another factor. So yeah, really tuning inward to really learn a lot about myself and who I really was, was the most powerful thing that I could do because over time I became less anxious. My body started to relax a little bit. I wasn't as tight and tense. The migraines I was having six to eight a month went down to one a month. And then now it's like, it's rare that it, that it happens because I am more regulated. I have more control over, yeah, the mind and the body. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I I think you, you touched on so many wonderful things there about the awareness. That's the key is yes, of course, we all are going to react. We're going to get upset or angry or triggered or defensive. And yes, sometimes in those, those, um, I guess, interactions or confrontations, especially somebody close to us, like a spouse or a family member, a really close friend, or maybe a colleague. It's like, you want to, you want to win. You want to be right. You want to have this, like, you know, that ego gets involved, but being aware of like, wow, this it's happening again. And being able, having that power or that courage to be able to say, Ooh, this is, I'm, I'm triggered right now. I'm going to go meditate. God, if only more people would do that in relationships, like I'm going to like put this on pause. We can come back to it. I'm going to go like, take a deep breath. I'm going to walk away, go do meditation, maybe, you know, go uh, get a cup of tea, go like sit out in the sunshine, something like that to break it. So not only does it preserve the relationship, hopefully, but it also calms you down. It calms your nervous system down to that parasympathetic nervous system um, mode. But it also can also help prevent, in your case, migraine headaches. Because if your your sensitivity or your, quote, um, strongest weakness is migraine headaches, and you know those triggers, like this is really helping you, but it's also helping other people as well. Um and it's it's really it's really about how long are you going to react, right? It's it's the length yeah. of time, and and you bring up something really really valuable because a lot of people don't ever do um, get really deep with their inner with with the mind with their emotions, and a lot of people mm-hmm. are triggered and they don't even know why they're triggered. It's just yeah. it's almost like it becomes this habitual pattern over years yes. and years, decades. And the fact that, yes, we have beautiful resources in the internet and we have retreats and seminars and things that we can learn from these days, fortunately, because a lot our parents didn't certainly didn't have access to this type of uh, valuable resources, but we have the capability to make those changes now. And the mind is so, so, so important. And it's, it is really a vital part of our health. Yes, it really is. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about, um, we, we touched on a little bit about the conflict in how, um, or sorry, how we learn through our challenges and our trials. And I want to bring up something that I think you've mentioned to me, um, previously about gratitude and the importance of gratitude um, not just when things are going beautifully, but also in, in other times. Can you comment a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Gratitude is one of the most powerful emotions and states that we can live in and we take it for granted and we're not, you know, um, intentional about being in gratitude enough, right? Because 
with gratitude, yeah, when I first started this journey and working on the mindset, I would keep a gratitude journal and I would write down like 10, five, 10 things I was grateful for. And then, yeah, you mentioned Adele working with her and she's like, and also add why. Not only what you're grateful for and why, because it just like just really anchors it in even more, which it definitely was challenging. So if you haven't done that, I definitely recommend doing it because it's like, well, yeah, if you're grateful for clean water, but why are you grateful for clean water? You know, and so it was it was really powerful to go through that exercise because it allowed me to like redirect my focus to gratitude because what I learned on this journey is that, yeah, when we're in a sympathetic state, there's emotions associated with that. And that's anxiety and frustration and overwhelm, you know, anger, resentment, bitterness, and I could go on and on. And you can feel that. You can feel that in your body because it's just this this low energy. It feels heavy. It feels tight. It feels tense. Um, But gratitude is an emotion we're going to feel when we're in a parasympathetic state. So I started tuning into my emotions because I knew you know, whatever I was experiencing was the state I was living in. And whether that was in a survival state or in a calm, healed flow state is what I like to call it. So, so I would, you know, really start to focus on gratitude because what I really wanted to experience more of in my life was gratitude, was peace, love, happiness, and fulfillment. And so with gratitude, yeah, I would always just focus on well, all the things that were going right in my life, all the things that I did have, but I realized, no, we need to also be grateful for the challenges. You know, can we be grateful for all the challenges that we've had in our life? And so I reflect back over my life and I'm like, I am grateful for the time my husband and I almost got a divorce the first year in our marriage, because that led me on the path of personal development and really understanding the mind. And I'm grateful for experiencing bloating and migraines and acne and all those physical things because that also led me to functional medicine. And I'm just also grateful for the anxiety because it really helped me to tune into my emotions and the nervous system and learn how to process them and regulate my nervous system. It led me, yeah, to discover Dr. Joe and really just dive in and do this work even deeper on myself. So yeah, we could sit here and say, why me? Because I did. I used to say that, like, why me? Why am I the one with the migraine? We can be a victim to that. Or we could, you know, look at it from a different perspective. I remember, because I, I believe in God. So if you believe in God or a higher power, source, universe, whatever that is for you. But I remember one day God telling me, like, you know, stop resisting the migraines. Because I realized I was resisting the migraines by trying to control everything in my life to prevent getting them. I was afraid of getting them because they were so painful and debilitating. But yeah, with the resistance, it wasn't helping me to heal from it. Instead, he wanted me to to look at the, the lesson that I can learn from it. And I'm like, wow, I've learned so much about yeah my body and and about emotions and regulating the nervous system and really tuning in. I never really tuned in to how I felt before. And so, yeah, can we use gratitude in a beautiful way that allows the healing to happen and stop resisting these things, these these challenges, these obstacles and, and being grateful for it all. Yeah. And you, you mentioned something. Thank you for sharing all that. You mentioned something earlier about what's the lesson here. Same thing with the migraines and the acne and the bloating and all the other, the the potential pending divorce. Like what's the lesson here? Um, And asking, I love, I love asking myself and I encourage a lot of my clients to do ask, ask yourself these open-ended questions, these tough questions. Like what do I need to change about myself? What's the lesson here? How can I be grateful for this horrific thing or this tragic thing or traumatizing thing, which a lot of times, Mm -hmm. you know, we all fall into the, many of us fall into the victim. Why me? Why is this happening to me? How come everybody else looks happy, especially on social media? And nobody really gets to see the full picture, the, the, the true reality of what's happening in somebody else's life. But we do sometimes fall into that. Poor me. I just, I want people to sympathize with me and I don't see anybody else struggling quite like I am, but we have no idea what somebody else's unfortunate setbacks are 
And I think just reframing that to just be like, okay, what do I need to let go of? What part of me needs to change? How can I become a better uh, partner? How can I become a better doctor or practitioner? How can I, um, how can I be a better human um, of service to other people? And I think sometimes when you start to reframe it that way, you get the answers either from God or you get a you get a download. You you get the answers that may not come to you in that moment, but it might come to you at some point that um, will help you shift your life in some way. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. It, it's definitely shifted my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanna um, I wanna bring up. Um, you do a little bit of human design. And mm-hmm. I, I love that. I've, I've gotten a little bit into human design myself, not, not as fully as I would love to. Tell us, um, tell us a little bit more about human design, why you love it, how it's uh, changed your life and or the lives of your, your clients. Yeah, I love human design because it, it's like when I learned about human design and really dove into who I am as a person, like according to human design, there's different energy types and uh, there's four different energy types. I mean, technically a five, because one's a subtype of one of the types and I am what's uh, called a projector. So there's manifestors, there's generators underneath generators, there's manifesting generators, which are a little bit of both of manifestors and generators. And then there's projectors and reflectors. Um, most of the population are either generators or manifesting generators. And because of their energy, they just, they have so much energy. They can just go and go and go and work and work and work as long as they find satisfaction in what they do. That is the key. And I love manifesting generators. I actually have a lot of clients who are manifesting generators because a lot of people see them as multi-passionate. It's like they have, they'll go off in this one direction, then change their mind and go off and do something else and change their mind. And that's okay. It's okay. To, or they'll juggle a bunch of things at the same time. Um, and that's okay. And as long as they're passionate and excited about that, you know, I love that for them. Uh, the second type, uh, most common type is a projector, like, like myself, where we have this energy. We're here to guide. We're here to guide everybody on, on their journey but our energy isn't lasting throughout the day like a generator manifesting generator. We actually need to take breaks during the day, which I was not aware of. So working 12 hours at an urgent care made sense why it drained me. It left me completely exhausted. I was burnt out. And once I switched over to, to guiding clients and yeah, through functional medicine and as, as my practice is, is evolving to so much more than functional medicine, it's allowed me the opportunity to take breaks, which helps me to restore my energy so it can show up important to others. Uh, and then you have manifestors. My husband's a manifester. They too have a lot of energy. Sometimes he has so much energy. I'm like, okay, go like, go for a run, like go do something. <laughs> I'm like, cause I can feel all this energy and I'm like, I need a break. <laughs> um, but manifestors were here to be the leaders to help lead us. And, um, and then there's the reflector, which is the rarest type, and they are just here to reflect the health of the environment. So each type, you know, has its own unique energy, it has its own unique gifts, but really diving into my design, it it's like it allowed me to be who I was designed, like reading who I was as a projector, like I'm here to guide, I'm not, you know, here to just like constantly hustle and grind, like it's okay for me to take rest. Um and just really looking at my gifts, like I love telling stories and just connecting with people. And I love, I have a 5-1 profile, meaning I'm here to learn and then share what I learn <laughs> with the world. But I also am here to go against the grain outside of the box. Like I realized I don't like being boxed in. <laughs> so when I was in Western medicine, I felt boxed in as a PA, all the rules, all the regulations. And so I jumped out into functional medicine, which allowed me a little bit more flexibility to do things that I wanted to do in a way, yeah, that I felt was was best for me and best for the clients, you know? So really learning about design, uh, human design has really step, helped me to step into who I really am, which I realized... I was disconnected from for such a long time because I thought I had to, yeah, be this person that my parents wanted me to be, be this person that society wanted me to be. But I felt like, again, I was never good enough to live up to all these expectations. 
and it was exhausting. And I'm like, well, no wonder I had anxiety and migraines and physical (laughs) issues in my body. Because if we're constantly striving to be someone we're not, it's going to affect us mentally, emotionally, physically, even spiritually. So, so yeah, learning about human design, it's an experiment. It's just like you get to take on what feels good for you. And so I started experimenting, allowing myself to take breaks during the day. And that felt so good. Like I used to sleep seven, seven and a half hours. Now I sleep eight to eight and a half hours. That feels really good for me because I'm restoring my energy. So I'm really using that. And I love using it with my clients because it helps me learn about them. Because again, I recognize that their energy is different than mine. And so I can support them on their journey. And also just there's something called authority. And so authority is what helps people make decisions because we all tend to make decisions with our mind, which is not always for the best because in the mind is the ego and the ego is always going to do, want us to do things that's going to protect us and not necessarily is what is best for us. So I love uh, understanding what is my client's authority because mine's splitting. Mine means that I'm very intuitive. As long as I'm listening to my intuition and making decisions from that place, that's what's best for me. But some of my clients are Uh, a a sacral authority, which means their gut. And so it's important, one, we work on their gut and get their gut feeling better because it's hard for them to tune into that gut response. But once their gut is healed, once they recognize what that gut response is, they're able to make better decisions for themselves. So I realized like, I'm not here to tell them what to do. I'm like, okay, here's the plan, but I want you to tune into your gut or tune into your intuition what feels like the next best step for you? Because your body is always telling you what is, what's, you know, the next best step, (laughs) what's going to feel good. Because if we're going to do things that don't feel good with us, you know, we're going to feel that physically in our body. We're going to go into that sympathetic state, but that's not going to help us to heal. And so I love using the authority. Um, There's other types, like there's an, also an emotional authority, And so uh, some of my clients will have this emotional wave. And so I I tell them, okay, when you're in the emotional wave, like wait, sometimes it's waiting like a day or sleeping on it. And then all of a sudden you'll get this like moment of clarity where you're like, okay, now I know what to do or what what decision to make, that kind of thing. So that's why I love human design because it really helps me to understand my clients and who they are so I can really best support them on their journey as well. Yeah, that was beautiful, beautifully expressed. Human design, um, by the way, I don't know. I know there's so many different websites and different um, avenues for learning about it, but it is based on your, your. it's kind of like a birth chart, so to speak. It's yeah. based on your the time that you were born, your birthday, uh, where you were born. I don't know if it actually goes into like location as well, but it's it's very specific for you. Um, versus just a general, you know, horoscope that you would get like in the newspaper. Um, I also, I am a manifesting generator. um, And so I, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of different passions. So it is very easy for me to get scattered. Um, But I truly am interested in so many things. So I, that's why I love meditation kind of coming back to that and practices like yoga. I I love other types of physical movement too, but I really have to make sure that I focus on grounding myself um, because I can go, 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 go. I'm one of those people that um, I do have a lot of energy. So it's, it's knowing who you are um, and knowing how you need to tune in and listen to that authority. And, um, but also I think it's really cool that uh, we have this capacity now to be able to help our clients and not just, oh, here's your lab test. Um, thank you for sharing your symptoms with me. Those are important too, but kind of tuning into just a little bit more of a, of a different spin, a different perspective on who, like what makes them, what motivates them, what drives them, what inspires them, what, how they need to kind of calm down a little bit and how they need to get centered. Um, I think it's just adding that extra um, that extra pearl to their, to their healing. Yeah, absolutely. Cause there's also their not self theme, which I find is interesting because it's linked with an emotion that is associated with a sympathetic state. So like for me, it's bitterness for manifesting generators, frustration. And so when you're experiencing, and I realize I'm like, Whoa, I 
when I would experience bitterness, I'm like, oh, that's because I wasn't operating in alignment with who I was. And so, yeah, if you're experiencing a lot of frustration and, and it doesn't mean we're not going to experience the other emotions because, yeah, I too experience frustration as well. But, um, yeah, when I, I, I realized like when I am experiencing those emotions, especially the not self one, I'm like, ooh, that was, you know, the red flag to be like, whoa, tune in. Am I, cause there's, there's so many elements to human design, but I would go through them like, okay, is this in alignment with me? Is this in alignment with me? And I'm like, if it wasn't, then I knew that's what I needed to work on to get myself back into alignment and, and feeling my, my best self again. So that's another great, great tool. Cause as I work on regulating my client's nervous system and something you can ask yourself too, Christy, every day, since you're manifesting generator, it's like, you know, am I feeling frustrated? And it's like, okay, well, if I am, like, how can I find satisfaction? Since that is, um, you know, your 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 goal is to find satisfaction in everything that you do. So or desire. So maybe it's desire, or maybe it's satisfaction. Yeah, satisfaction, yeah. desire. Yeah. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, as long as you are aware of that, then you can yeah just make that simple simple or ask that simple question to make that shift and. Yeah, if you can figure out how to bring more satisfaction, you're going to shift out of frustration really quick and be back in alignment with who you are. Yeah, it's it's the evolution. It's the growth. It's the constantly evolving it. We're supposed mm -hmm. to. And I think sometimes yeah. we get stuck in our old ways or our patterns because they're familiar. Com it's, we're comfortable right. and this is what we've always done. But stepping outside doesn't always have to be uncomfortable. It can be um, radiant. It could, it could give us that new, newfound enthusiasm. But I also kind of like to think of it as like, we're meant to evolve. We're meant to change. It's not just a, let me just change things up just to be different. And, but I think, um, as a, as a human species, we are supposed to evolve. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's really as simple as, you know, what is our perspective? You know, we can view this as like, oh, I don't want to change. I don't want to evolve. And it's hard, or we can say, no, like I'm going to embrace change and I'm going to embrace the evolution. I'm going to embrace all the lessons and I'm going to embrace it all with gratitude because if we can do it from that place, it does make this journey so much more enjoyable. So you have a book. What's the name of your book? <laughs> yeah, it's called Estrogen is a Bitch and it's all about hormone imbalance because when I went off birth control, yeah, for being on it for over 15 years for acne, my hormones went crazy. So I learned a lot about the hormones and I realized there's not a lot of information out there. Thankfully, there's more and more functional medicine practitioners that are getting information out there now. But yeah, I released it a couple years ago because I wanted a manual for women to learn more, to learn more, especially about the most common hormonal imbalance that I saw in a lot of my clients was estrogen dominance when there was just three different patterns where yeah, estrogen and progesterone weren't balanced and it was just creating a lot of issues. So, so yeah, that book is available on Amazon on all different forms. So yeah, Kindle, a uh, hardcover paperback and the audio version as well. That's so exciting. And, um, and it sounds like you've got potentially another book that you are that's, that's in your head, in your beautiful mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am currently working on writing my second book. It's called Liberated. Oh, and it's literally, yeah, me going through everything that I've learned over the last six years to liberate the mind, liberate the body and liberate the spirit to move out of, yeah, just that anxiety to, to heal the body so we can step into peace so we can embody the radiance of who we really are. So I'm excited to bring this this book, birth this book into the world because I'm like, there's just so much more that we need to know when it comes to healing. So yeah, that is in the process. Not sure when that's going to be released, but but soon. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I I will read it. I will, and I'll get your other one too because I I love talking about home runs. We didn't totally dive into that, but that's okay. I we got to talk about all the things that I really wanted to talk about, and I hope you exactly. did too. Same. <laughs> it, is, it has been such a pleasure, Kate. I really enjoyed this conversation today. Um, where can people find you? Yeah, so you can find me online at radiantbydesign.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at the Kate Vasquez. And that's Vasquez with two Z's, 
V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. And uh, yeah, just uh, follow me there. If you have any questions, send me a DM. I love responding back to people and it will be me that is responding. And that's the beauty um, of of reaching out. You're not going to get a robot or an assistant. It will be me because I love just connecting with with people. And, and, and if you have any questions and want to know more, yeah, you can find me there, but, um, but yeah, you can also get more information on at radiantbydesign.com. I also have an incredible podcast course that I created that also walks through a lot of the, the mental, the emotional pieces to help you regulate your nervous system. It's called already enough. And you can find that uh, in the link in my bio and Instagram and on my website as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Kate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Christie. It's been a pleasure as well. The views and opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the host and the guest and are not intended to provide nor are they a suitable substitute for professional care by a doctor, therapist, mental health professional, or other qualified medical professional. Thank you for listening to the Fire, Soul, and Grace podcast. Share this episode with someone in your life. Subscribe to this podcast so you can hear more valuable content on how to live your best life. Be sure to connect with us at firesoulandgracepodcast.com and please join us in the next episode.